Okay. Hi, everybody. This is a video. Um, I'm like, uh, like a demonstrator, I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast, and I've been um, doing this for the last 15 years. Um, I'm focused on data security most of my time. Um, and actually, I've worked a lot in data loss prevention. Uh, so, uh, just a moment. Good. And um, recently, we came across this idea of building uh, what we call today a security knowledge graph. And first of all, I wanted to share with you what's a knowledge graph and why is it maybe an important thing to, to, to consider when you um, when you think about your cybersecurity program. So a knowledge graph in the purest form and as Google and others defined it, is a structured data which can create relationships between nodes and um, between, between the nodes that compose this graph. If you've done the computer science, you've came across this idea a lot in, in the classes. And um, there are a lot of um, good use cases that you can apply um, a graph to. One of that use cases, in, in my opinion, and a very good use case for it, is trying to uh, see and understand the cybersecurity landscape of your organization. And this is why the topic for today is called your organization as a security, as a security knowledge graph or as a knowledge graph, because you can actually um, think of it in, in this particular form. And the concept of knowledge graph uh, creates this uh, interlinked description between assets, between objects, something then you can later explore and navigate. So just a moment. Some popular knowledge graphs so that you can actually, you know, get an idea of what's a knowledge graph were built already and they are applied at scale in, in, in the world. And first, the first knowledge graphs that we came across were in 2007 when uh, DBPDI and Freebase created these knowledge graphs where you could actually explore uh, and, and uh, explore knowledge in, in, in a graph way. So they relied on collecting data from Wikipedia, from other sources, but mainly from Wikipedia and public data. And they've put all of that in a way that you can uh, look at one piece of information and from that specific piece of information, you can explore other connected data to it. Then in 2012, Google introduced their knowledge graph, which was called exactly the Google knowledge graph. Uh, they also uh, ingested a lot of data from, from the Wikipedia, Freebase and some other sources. And of course, they came up with some, with some concepts and protocols to work with the data that's in a graph. Later on, uh, other companies have adopted this and I'll be, I'll be uh, talking about them in a, in, a few, in a few moments. But you also have um, GeoNames. Uh, it, it was open source somehow uh, and you could actually explore geographic areas, entities and features in, in a knowledge graph. And another big company, which is Ontotext, uh, is creating a fact forge, which is a knowledge graph for facts that you can actually explore. And one of my favorites, as I listed here, is Rome. Rome Research is, is a note-taking app, but the idea behind it is very, very nice. It, it is a way to explore uh, the notes and the, and, and the notes that you have and you take to all ex explore them uh, in, a, in a connected way. So if you created something that, you know, for example, you have put in a Confluence page uh, and then reference some other uh, resources, Rome will actually uh, create these relationships and will allow you to explore that specific um, uh, data, the notes that you have in, um, in a very nice graphical, graphical way. So when we think about the idea of the knowledge graph and the fact that you can actually, you know, have all of this in, in a graph. And then we look at the cybersecurity industry and we look at the tools and so solutions that we can use on a daily basis. You start to realize that actually there's a big discrepancy on how we think about or how we should think about our, our infrastructure, our organization, our digital assets and what we get uh, when we look at the tools and solutions that we have there. 
And the cloud itself and all these SaaS apps that we use today, think about Dropbox, think about Okta, think about, I don't know, even GitHub and of course, AWS, Google Cloud and Microsoft Azure, the big, the big uh, public cloud providers, all of them offer you almost unlimited ways of generating data and using their resources. And they became the backbone of the internet of the digital world, you know? And our entire IT infrastructure, even on-prem, is always connected. You always have the endpoints, the laptops, they are connecting to, to your infrastructure, to your network, and they are connected, right? Even though we see it as a list of inventory in a solution, uh, they're not just that. And still, with this in mind, when you look at all of this, most of the times data, security uh, posture, and all of that is, you know, is analyzed separately, is always considered to be separate, which is not the case in, at, at all. And we, we, we're missing a lot of things when we don't analyze data in a context. And we somehow have, you know, uh, we, we have the duty to think about all of this in, in a relationship. Who has access to those virtual machines? What identities were provided, provisioned by, um, I don't know, maybe by Okta? What um, users um, or what systems have vulnerabilities? Are they misconfigured? Misconfigured in terms of, are they publicly exposed or not? Do they allow access to my production environment? All of this, can be easily deducted from, uh, from a knowledge graph while it's very, very hard to be deducted from a list of issues. And if you look at the big cloud providers today, for example, or other sources of data, you can actually see that this is still a problem. If you look at the instances in AWS, there are still a list of instances telling that if they're public or not, but they don't surface the fact that a specific VM can be connected to a data repository meaning something that stores data for you. Okay, so we talked about why it's important and why we should think about graphs in, the, in, in cybersecurity. One of the reasons I came up with, the, uh, with, with this talk is that we all at least start to think about the graphs and, and uh, cybersecurity because applying knowledge graph to cybersecurity will definitely improve everything that you do because you actually get a more organized way of looking at data, you know? And you actually get a map, a topology of all your digital assets. So imagine if you could import and create a mapping, not just of um, your laptops, but also of the people that have access to those laptops or endpoints. Um, what type of vulnerabilities are in that specific endpoint? Are they allowed to access, you know, production environment? All of this can, can be surfaced from a contextual view of all of these digital assets, you know? And one of the things that can result of all of this is that if you create a model that you can later, you know, use like an abstract layer, you could actually import data even from, uh, from your, like Workday. If you use Workday or Personio uh, for onboarding people in your company and, you could use that as an HR um, tool. So why is a knowledge graph relevant to cybersecurity? It, it is hard to explain why would someone want to, think, want to think about a knowledge graph when they apply that to cybersecurity, but I'm just presenting here a scenario which will somehow you know, make you think about it. If you have an Okta user identity, and that's an identity that's been provisioned by Okta, who has access. Of course, they need to work. It's your employee and they need to work and they have access to a laptop. And with the access to that laptop, they have configured a Git repository where they can push their work to, right? And they also have access to a production environment, which is probably storing sensitive data. And that specific endpoint um, can connect to that specific AWS production account and can generate uh, maybe, I don't know, or maybe can, can change the configuration there. If somebody gets access to that specific laptop and it has outdated packages and it allowed that, 
then someone can get access to your AWS production account just because they had, you know, an access to a system. And that allowed not just lateral movement, but actually moving from on-prem to cloud. And, and that's something you totally miss in a least based solution. So a graph from, from my point of view will definitely make that very, very obvious for you and will allow you to see the context and think about the context of that specific issue. For example, here, I just wanted to show you something uh, which, which is actually um, at the base of a graph system and the fact that everything is connected. So we have here in the center a virtual machine that can be accessed from the internet because that's the way the security groups are configured and that's the way um, uh, the ports are opened. But also uh, this specific uh, virtual machine can also connect to S3 buckets, you know, and they can expose sensitive data. So this is a virtual machine exposed on the internet either to port 22 or to port 80, and it's allowing access to an S3 bucket that may contain credit card numbers, if you think about it. And also, if you can ingest data from Tenable or from, um, um, I don't know, Rapid7, data that can tell you, hey, this virtual machine is also using outdated packages, then you can, you can have a better and richer understanding of your cloud infrastructure, because you know that in the context of this specific issue that this machine is exposed to the internet and connecting to an S3 bucket and a production environment, uh, database in production environment, there's also this problem that it has outdated packages or exploitable packages. And this is something you definitely miss a lot if you cannot think about your cloud security in a connected way. And that's one thing just for the cloud. But all of this um, access to the system was either provisioned to AWS Identity and Access Management, or you used Okta to provision the user and to allow access to all of your infrastructure, meaning the AWS accounts, meaning maybe uh, the access to the endpoint, meaning access to Dropbox and, and other sources or other SaaS applications that your organization rely on to function normally. So all of that can be factored in a security knowledge graph. And, in, and when you do that, it can surface all of these issues of misconfigurations, vulnerabilities, analyzing data in context is easy in that case. What does a security knowledge graph bring to cybersecurity, like the big, the big picture? First of all, there's this saying in cybersecurity, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard it, that you know, attackers and bad actors always think in graphs, while we trying to protect our infrastructure and our organization, we think in lists and we think, okay, we have this specific VM, let's see how an attacker will not be able to exploit it. It doesn't work like that for them, no? They try to find the weakest link, either if it's a human uh, error or if it's a misconfigured environment. And from that point on, they, they try and they start to, uh, to go uh, in different places, trying to get access to the data and maybe exfiltrate all of that data. When you start thinking in graphs, and when you start thinking that your organization is a connected one, you actually start to understand that if somebody gets access to that specific piece of IT uh, or to that specific IT asset, it might pose a problem for your entire organization, not just for the fact that, okay, they can take data from there, but maybe they can get back to data even on-prem in, in some cases. Um, another thing that a knowledge graph can be used for, and it's very helpful. It, it allows you, and if you create the proper connections to data sources, it allows you to put almost unlimited data in the graph, which means the more and more data you put in the graph, the richer and more pertinent the responses and the analysis of your cloud becomes. So you're not gonna be uh, thinking about an identity provision for your new employee, as a single entity, but you are going to be able to explore 
what access it is allowed, what type of access and how granular is uh, provisioned. Uh, should somebody from accounting have access to a production environment that stores customers' data in Google Cloud? Most likely no. If you, if you can surface all of these issues, then you get what we call a true visibility into all your digital assets because you can explore those in the graph. And that's a pure visibility, not just you know, a list of, of um, assets that you can explore. It allows you to see the, the, the way your assets are connected and how they interconnect with other assets and resources. And of course, like I said earlier, this contextual analysis of digital assets can also surface vulnerabilities and misconfigurations easily. So think about the, the use case with Tenable, or even if you use Sneak or Vera code to scan for vulnerabilities in code, you could actually import the GitHub repository and the results of the scanning results, uh, the results of the scan uh, from Vera code could be actually factored in the graph that you have. You can also automatically classify data. So you can create some classes and you put everything there, which allows you at the later stage to, you know, to uh, easily interact with that data based on those classes. And one of the things that we've seen, it helps a lot when you think about all your cybersecurity program in a graph way as compared to, to, to analyzing thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of uh, logs and data, it improves the job of a uh, security operating center um, um, person or a security analyst, just because it allows them to, um, you know, to speed up coming up with, with facts about that specific issue. And this is a big thing because you spend a lot of time. And if you ask me today, it's already unmanageable. All, all of the data that comes out of the security system, cybersecurity tools, all of the logs and alert fatigue that you get out of these tools, it's, it's not humanly possible to, you know, to just digest and come up with, with a good uh, analysis based on, on data that's, that's stored in list or in, in time-based um, system. While if you can do that in a graph system, it totally changes you know, um, the thinking about where that problem is. So imagine for yourself or for your organization, what could actually this mean? So imagine that you have some cloud accounts in an Azure and Google. And if you look at some security tools or if you rely on the solutions that the public cloud providers are offering you, you're gonna end up having you know, an overview of a list of maybe a few hundred or thousand assets. But when you think about a knowledge graph that could power and make you understand your enterprise, then there's virtually no limit with what you can put there. You can, you can put data from Box. You can put data from your Git, um, your Git repository. You can um, decompose the cloud infrastructure that you use in different layers, meaning you can look at the infrastructure as a service, then you can have uh, the platform as a service as another layer. And definitely you can even have the applications which are running in the cloud be part of your organization security knowledge graph. In the end, you will actually know that, okay, I have some vulnerabilities in this specific package, which is part of this specific application, which is deployed in a Kubernetes cluster in my AWS production. And you will actually get a map of all of this, which will allow you to see the problem, not just deduct it or wait for, for it to be a problem. And you could prioritize the remediation and definitely improve your cybersecurity program. And of course, all of this should rely on some technology and the available solutions that are today out there are either you know, open source and require your effort to be able to implement it, or you could actually leverage some of the technology um, because there are technologies which can be leveraged as managed uh, services. 
One of the most popular uh, solutions uh, that it's used like a graph system. So first of all, you will need the graph database or graph system to store all of these nodes and the relationship between them. One solution is to use a parsed interpop. This is a very uh, mature and um, already it has like, I think almost 10 years of history. It's, it's a solution that works pretty well and you will have to manage all of it. And it relies on the branding graph traversal language that will allow you to, you know, traverse the graph in the purest form that you can think of, um, of, um, of an organization. One thing that um, we also looked at is the Neo4j graph database. Uh, it comes with a community edition and you can actually use it and play with it as a community edition, but you, you can also get, you know, a premium um, license that gives you more, um, more things that you can, you can use. Also recently, AWS offer, uh, offered a service which is called um, Amazon Web Services Neptune. It's a fast, reliable and managed. That's a very important thing. It's a fully managed graph database system offered by AWS as a service. So you can scale it up and down as you need it and you can actually use it for your uh, needs. You can actually put data in inside that knowledge graph that you create there based on the technology. And there are some products and I really like a few uh, public or open source products. One is cartography. It's a Python based tool, uh, you know, that you can run against your cloud infrastructure and it tries to map the assets and create relationships between them um, in, a, in a visual, visual form. It's powered by Neo4j and you can actually go to, um, to uh, GitHub and look at it. It's maintained by Lyft, uh, by Lyft, um, uh, the mobility company. They created this cartography because they use uh, this sort of technology in their organization for mapping, um, for creating routes in, in their solution. You have open, open CSPM, which is a good solution. And um, also, if you, if you want to look at um, there are recently, this is pretty new. The, the knowledge graph and the security knowledge graph concepts are pretty new in the cybersecurity industry. They are not new in the, in the IT world, but we can see recently more and more applications in the cybersecurity uh, world. Uh, SciScale provides one of the security knowledge graphs that you can use to, you know, get a view into all your digital uh, organization because it connects to cloud providers, it connects to uh, SaaS providers, it connects to identity uh, providers know. and a lot of other things. So that's about it. Uh, may the security knowledge graph protect you. That's something I like to tell because you can actually do better with your cybersecurity program if you start thinking in the graphs. Thank you.